الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Imam Bakir, Imam of IC in EV uh, Today I am so excited and happy and delighted to meet with uh, Professor Yas Al-Qadi in his masjid, Ibik uh, Masjid to ask him some questions uh, يعني I call it like spicy questions and critical questions and everyone is wondering about the answers and even Dr. Yasser answered about uh, many of these questions but today I want to clearly to listen to the views of Dr. Yasser Qadi. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِ Welcome, Dr. Salam alaykum. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. Shaykhana, every time you come to my city and uh, you want to, mashallah, interview me, interrogate me, walhamdulillah, fabiha wa ni'ma, I appreciate these and I hope, mashallah, there is fire and benefit uh, in these types of conversations, inshallah. Well, Shaykhana, last, last interview, a lot of people, they, alhamdulillah, got benefited uh, from your views and uh, many people, they knew you more and they even start uh, following your uh, videos because it was clear for them uh, your answers that time. Uh, I'm so happy for that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But just to be clear, this is something you want to be done. Inshallah. And and uh, these questions are very hassas, but Naam. no inshallah problem, khair. inshallah. Whatever inshallah you guys khair. want. Alhamdulillah. Taib, we have 10 questions today. Five questions, uh, aqadi questions or aqidah matters, inshallah. And five questions with the fiqhi uh, issues and matters. Ta'ala. So let me start with the first uh, question with Dr. Yasser, something about aqidah. Sheikhna, nowadays, uh, many people in many different places, they have different aqaid. For example, this is al- there is al-aqidah al-athariya al-salafiyya, there is al-aqidah al-ash'ariya, there is al-aqidah al-maturidiyya, there is al-aqidah al-barwilli, diubandi, all these groups of mm. people. Uh, how could we reach to one concept that everyone feels okay with others? Yani when, uh, first of all, what is the uh, most accurate aqidah? Mm. Then uh, how to deal with those who have different aqaid? Hmm. So, Sheikh th- this topic is actually one that requires far more time than a quick Q&A. And I've actually given three khutbas last year about dealing with sectarianism. So I encourage the viewers to watch that in more detail. It literally is called, and how do we deal with sectarian differences? It's three khutbas, and I went into usul, qawaid, talked about it in a broad um, a sense. Khulasat al-Qawl, Sheikh is that the most important thing, the aqidah of the Qur'an, is number one, that there is one Khaliq and Bari, there is one creator and God that is worthy of worship, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Number two, that this Khaliq sends messengers for our Hidayah. And number three, there's Ba'd Ba'd al Mawt. These three things are essential to be Muslim. Belief in one God, one creator, one deity worthy of worship, belief in the prophets and messengers, and belief in Ba'd Ba'd al Mawt and, uh, and uh, Jannah and Nar and Hisab. If you look at the Quran, every single page without exception mentions all three or one or, or two of these three. You will not find a single page of the whole Quran except that these concepts constantly are brought forth. So we as Muslims need to concentrate on what the Quran concentrates Actually, on. Actually, to be honest, no alim from all these madahib talk about what you said. All of them talk about the differences so, among them. So my issue is we begin with what the Quran begins okay. with. Okay. And we emphasize what the Quran emphasizes. And if a person believes in the basics of Quranic theology, which is what I've just explained, Alhamdulillah, he's a Muslim or she's a Muslim. And inshaAllah ta'ala, there, yani, there is hope for them in the hereafter. Now, as for the developed aqa'id that, that came in the second, third, fourth century and continue to be developed and continue still in our times. So these are all tools that are meant to extrapolate, that are meant to understand, just like madhaib fiqhiya are tools to extrapolate the sharia. Allah did not reveal the Hanafi madhab, the Shafi'i madhab, the Maliki madhab, the Zahiri madhab, the Hanbali madhab. Allah did not reveal the madhaib. Allah revealed a book and sent a messenger. And scholars wanted to understand the sharia. And so alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us with many ulama. And these ulama brought forth many madhaib. And some madhaib are, يعني, you know, uh, more mainstream than others, but يعني, fi kullin khair, inshallah. Which madhaib that we have to follow? So uh, the, the, the madhaib do not dictate one's salvation in the akhirah. Nobody can say have to follow. 
Somebody says has to follow, he has to say Allah has obligated. And Allah did not obligate us to follow a madhab. Allah obligated us to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to obey Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So we obey Allah and we obey the Messenger. Okay. So these madhahib fiqhiyya are tools. Okay. We should not make the tools the goals. Okay. Let the same goes for madhahib aqadiyya. Uh, let, let me go right away with the point, like what they say. They have a differences in al-asma wa sifat. Uh, my question is, what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said <laughs> about ayat uh, al-asma wa sifat. Yani for example, كل شيء هالك إلا وجه. What the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said <laughs> about this ayah, which has a big khilaf between al-Mu'tazila, between al-Ashaira, mm -hmm. between al-Athariya, and some of them they make others kafir because of the interpretation of the ayah. So but if it's so important and aqida. Why the Prophet did not interpret all these ayat exactly which you're talking about? Yeah, uh, so the issue Asma comes, Shaykhana, if you were to play, as they say, the devil's advocate or the angel's advocate, each group is going to say, they're going to quote you their evidences and say, it is clear the Prophet meant kada wa kada. So they will bring you their evidences. But in the end of the day, our Prophet وسلم, is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a language that is befitting Allah. What did he mean by these sifat is something that every group is going to read in their interpretation. So the Atharis will say he meant this, and the Asha'ir will say he meant this, and the Mu'tazir will say he meant this. All of them, muttafiqun, they're in agreement that they want to follow what the Prophet followed. In this agreement, they have saved themselves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But being so, aqeedah is so important. So why the Prophet did not say the accurate meaning of all these ayat without meanings, like just, yeah. You so go there's and two you ways explain. to respond to this. Oh, go ahead. The, the first way, if you are a follower of one of these strands of yani, uh, atheism, ashadism, atridism, their response will be, he did. And they will give you their evidences, but their evidences are their interpretations of what the Prophet said. It's not, the Prophet did not say istiwa means this. He did not say this. Yeah. But every group is going to read in, for example, hadith al nuzul or hadith al maji or hadith al surah, whatever they might say. You are jumping to an issue that, in my humble opinion, I've spoken about this in my library chats, in my humble opinion, this issue is not an issue that we should divide the ummah over. And all of the firaq that are mainstream, all of these that you mentioned, all of them, they believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Khaliq, Al-Bari, Al-Musawwir, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus. All of them believe Laysa kamithlihi shay, nothing is like him. All of them believe Lam yukul lakuf wa nahad. And so this belief is Alhamdulillah salvational. But the first question they ask, and I'm going to ask you this question, please, Sheikh, that where is Allah? Ayn Allah? Sibak al-Razzaq al-Khalaq al-Azim. We so, all of us know that. Ayn so, Allah, where is so Allah? So this issue, Shaykhana, again, <laughs> we could spend hours talking about this and maybe one day I will give a longer. Uh, taban, the fitra and the simplistic answer, the average Muslim, if they say that Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, above us, this is a correct and valid answer. Now here we go now. Again, you're getting to the yeah. semantics. Here's the issue, Shaykhana. You are trying to describe an entity, a being that is different from existence in a language that is an existent language. So language falls short of describing that which is beyond language. Language falls short of describing the entity, haqiqatan, and even the Athari say this, that they say, we understand the meaning in one sense, but we don't understand the kayf. Even the Athari's and the Hanabil and the Salafis, they are saying the word we know, but the kayfiyah we don't know. This is, in reality, all of the groups, all of them are saying, haqiqat al-that, haqiqat al-sifat, we don't understand it. If they all agree in this, then why are they fighting over it? So my whole point is, and I say this why bluntly. Why do you make it too tough then? If it's I say so this very and, bluntly. Yeah, go ahead. This issue was exaggerated more than it needed to be. Mm. And all of them, muttafiqoon, that Allah is wahid, and Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, and Allah is worthy of worship, and Allah hears our du'as. So what is the Thamaratul Khilaf? What difference does it make? That's what I'm did, about. did the Aqeedah of the one who believes this make him a better Muslim? And the one who believes that, did he stop praying to Hajjud? In reality, the differences between these Aqaid were made bigger than they need to be. And we in our times need to understand that we have far bigger issues than how do you understand nuzul and how do you understand istiwa. The thamaratul khilaf, right? The, the, the benefit of this type of discourse is minimal. 
And okay. we need to be blunt about this. So just let me ask I don't, so I don't, matter. I don't really bother myself with no. a, a, the, the the Muslim who is within mainstream Islam, which mm. particular yani, uh, uh, yeah, understanding uh, he follows. No. I'm more concerned: is this person avoiding the kabair? Is this person praying five times a day? Is this person of good akhlaq? This is much more important. No. And as for these tafasil of the sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, no. there is very little thamara of this khilaf and. No. Every group is forced to make its own opinions more important than it really is. Now, uh, just Sheikh, I wanted to explain something uh, here. When I'm asking Dr. Yasser, I'm representing the opposition, like uh, the opponents of Sheikh Yasser. Just I'm hmm. uh, representing their views. It's not mine. But <laughs> sometimes you will find me ask uh, maybe not uh, good questions, but just I'm trying to represent others' view. For some of them, they knew that I'm going to- uh, No problem. An and I want to say one more thing before we okay, move on to ahead. the next question. And that is that- Not next question. We're still in this We're question. In this they question. ask <laughs> you, they ask you when someone asks you Sheikh Yasser, yes. where is Allah? What you have to say? If you follow the Quranic terminology, there's nothing what wrong with it. What do you think about Hadith Asma? Okay. Uh, what do you think yeah, about it? So this Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. It's, okay. uh, it's something that is What accepted. is the interpretation of it for, uh, as, so as your view? The fitra, the fitra of every, even the non-Muslim, when they make dua, they will look up. But Everybody understands in our times, when you look up, you don't mean in the three-dimensional up because the earth is round. Ibn Taymiyyah so himself, says this. Hadith in the end of Ibn the day. himself no. says this, that the earth is round. And no. what is up for us is down for the people on top of the earth, the earth, this earth. No. So the fawqiyya is yaliq bi jalalillah, the, the, the transcendence of Allah. Yani Allah is above us, transcendence. No, no, of course الشيخ. not. Nobody, nobody says that Allah Azza wa Jal is inside the creation. Nobody لا, says they that. said Allah fi sama bi kayfiyatin la na'alamuha. When you say which is Yeah, so Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah did, no, not, did not understand this, what you are saying. Ibn Taymiyyah, Azza wa Jal, Ibn Taymiyyah uh, rahimahullah ta'ala understood that Fissama here means uh, that he is above the heavens, right? No. He's not inside of the heavens and he has his evidence of this. So, but now he uses Al-Majaz as well. So you are saying Majaz and he will say it's not Majaz. So mm. in reality, Shaykh, and, I, and I'm trying to be condensed and oh, it's a ahead. very long topic. Yes. This is, as usual, going to get me into trouble. But frankly, the whole issue of where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is more khilaf lawdi than khilaf haqiqi. No, no. I'm saying this bluntly, and I know it's going to get me into trouble. No. And because this is not what Ar-Razi says or Ibn Taymiyyah says. They both make a very big deal about, yani, we don't describe Allah with the jihad, and Allah is folk. And in reality, the both of them are worshipping Allah in the same manner. And the both of them are reading the Quran and praying tahajjud and being righteous and pious. فَكَانَ مَا ذَا And the one that says, Allah is fis sama, but we don't know the kayfiyah. In reality, this is exactly what the other one who says Allah is not fis sama because this would mean kada wa kada. So the, what the one is affirming is actually conceptually the same as what the other is affirming, no. right? Because no. no one says, no athari, no hanbali, no Ibn Taymiyyah follower actually says fis sama bima'na in the three dimensional coordinates, he's literally above us. If we have X, Y, Z access, literally he is this way. Nobody says this no. because they understand. But Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, qala harfan anna Allah yajlis ala al kursi. What do you think, Sheikh? No, he did not say yajlis. Actually, I know this for a fact. He did not say yajlis. What this is say? not Ibn Taymiyyah. This is um, some of the Hanabila before, Al Qadi, Abu Ya'la, and others, they would use he these said, terms. Al -Kursi la, 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 la. Ibn Taymiyyah did not say this, Sheikh. And I, I, I know okay. this. Okay. It's not Ibn Taymiyyah. This is Abu Ya'la, and others use these phrasings. And what Ibn Taymiyyah says, phrase, Ibn Taymiyyah says that we should only use what the Quran uses. And the Quran uses istawa ala al-arsh, so we leave it istawa ala al-arsh. The Quran says, Nasullah fa nasiyahum. Hal yansa Allah? Yeah, so nasa huna, bima'na shiddat al-zuhul. Hayarja al-majaz wa irga ala al-makhanif, aladhi wasafahum bil-makhanif, sayarja ya'akhud kalamuhum. Again, Shaykh, we're going into all of these tafasil, and in my humble opinion, this type of discourse is not beneficial because Nobody. But they are judging others based on this. This matter. is the problem. This is the problem. This, this is, is what I'm problem. talking about. Both sides are mistaken. Yes. In how I much they you. exaggerate this yep. issue, yep. because no, none of these groups is actually astaghfirullah disrespecting Allah Azza wa Jalla. None of these groups. Every no. one of them wants Stihad. to make ta'zim no. of Allah. No. No. That niyyah. No. Is what is what we look at, right? No. And this whole controversy should not divide the ummah the way that it has divided the ummah. Yes. Taib Sheikhna, uh, question number two, actually one from the most difficult questions, uh, not for Muslims only, for 
even those who do not believe in Allah, they think about this question, that السؤال القدري والجبري القدرية والجبرية Do people have free will or uh, just people have, let us say, uh, uh, that they, uh, they are majboreen to make something. So again, Shaykh, mashallah, your questions are very amiq, very deep, very philosophical, and we are in a quick Q&A round, and it is very difficult to give justice to this no. answer. And in fact, I have not even given a very long topic no. in this because Do you believe is, in determinism so, or do you believe in free so will? So this simplistic notion, Aslan itself is mistaken. The no. simplistic notion of either this or that. Shaykh Al-Kareem, in my humble opinion, uh, the issue of Qadr, and predestination and the ilm of Allah and the mashia of Allah and the irada of Allah. This issue is something that our limited minds will never be able to fully comprehend. Our finite minds can never understand the infinity of Allah's qudra and khalq and power. And it is a mistake to assume that we will be able to understand who exactly are we to imagine that our aql is going to understand the qudra and the ilm of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we, the less we think about this, and in fact, in our Sunni tradition, there's a very interesting hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, that the only time, according to our Sunni tradition, the Sahaba had an ikhtilaf over aqidah in the time of the Prophet was over this issue of Qadr. In uh, Sunan al-Tirmidhi, it is narrated that some of the Sahaba began speaking, you know, that uh, the, the Quran seems to suggest a type of free will. And others said, but the Quran seems to also suggest that, you know, there is no free will. And according to the hadith, the Prophet came out, يعني, الوجه, his face was angry and red. And he goes, Abi hadha umirtum, did I command you to do this? To try to find the Qurans, yani, fighting each other or not fighting each other, but no. uh, using verses of the Quran no. against each other. Right? But, but he said also, كل شيء مكتوب على الإنسان شقي أم سعيد. So, For the question here is, just so, let me no, ask the question clearly, Sheikh, then I'm, I'm going to listen to the answer. I'm saying the question itself is flawed. لا, 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 not flawed. I'm, I'm asking a regular question. Millions of people are asking it. It's regular question, عقل question. هل مخير أم مجبور؟ لا مخير ومجبور. Then what? أنا أسأل سؤال واضح وصريح. Yes. Do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write upon us what we're going to do or no? So the, again, Sheikh, you want a simplistic answer for a very deep question. No. And this is the problem. Allah Azza wa Jal, by virtue of the fact that He is Alimul Ghaib, Alamul Ghuyub, no. must know everything. What about His willing? Sheikh, let me no, finish. Go ahead, go ahead. He must know everything. No. If He does not know, then A'udhu Billah, this is Tanqis fi ilmillah. No. And that's why even the Mu'tazila did not negate Allah's ilm. No. Even the Mu'tazila. So Amen. no Muslim who prays five times a day. No. Yani, hukiya al nas, yani, but no, no. firqa. No. no firqa, right? Yes, you had Ibn Sina, but no firqa. No. Denied Allah's ilm. Okay. Okay. Jayid. The ikhtilaf comes that does Allah's Mashia uh, overcome our Mashia? Yeah, this is this the main is, question. Okay, this is another issue. Forget now. about al-ilm. Let us go now. to al Mashia wal yeah, willing. So, so. In order to be time frame, our time frame, I'm going to answer in a different way. I believe it is not possible for our minds and our language to understand this reality. Therefore, what we should do is affirm Allah is all powerful, affirm Allah is all knowledgeable, affirm that nothing happens without His knowledge and Mashiach and Qudra. We affirm that fi haqqillah. And we live our lives as if we have free will. But wa ma how to explain this ayah? So it's very easy to explain in the sense of the Quran because Liman yastaqim. Allah yeah. affirms a Mashia. Nah. Allah Azza wa Jal says you have a Mashia. Then okay. Allah Azza wa Jal makes it contingent, no, but if, you if cannot we cannot reach Shaykhna, if we cannot reach to the ilm of Allah or the qudra of Allah or the Mashia of Allah, and we cannot even explain it or we cannot imagine it. Why he himself talks about it? Because it's always done in the context of praising Allah's magnificence and Allah's power. It is never done to tell us, don't do anything because you cannot do anything. Al-Aqs, the Quran always tells us, I'malu wa qul i'malu, right? And Allah tells us to pray and Allah tells us to fast. The entire Quran is so commanded. why we have to okay? make ilm uh, and so, he written upon so, us what we're gonna so do. Yeah, what's the, the purpose Quran, of the dua then? So if when the Quran, that, no, will you to be affirm, uh, sick to affirm, or to affirm Allah's power, 
and to therefore submit to Allah's magnificence without affecting our actions. The Quran is full of action-based verbs. So that's what I'm trying to say is to be very simplistic. And again, this is a quick Q&A. So I know no. uh, any the critics can always deconstruct no. everything, no. but I have to say something that comes across as contradictory. We affirm Allah's omnipotence, Allah's all-powerful, Allah's Mashia is nafida. We affirm all of this and we live our lives as if we have free will. Without understanding. No, we, we, we affirm We it. cannot reach to the understanding. But we affirm Allah's magnificence. Yeah, we know and that. We, yeah, oh, khalas. And, but, we, but we don't know what is written for our father. But how father. to worship, Shaykh? Again, this is my, not my talk, but I'm, I'm bringing even Kalam yeah. al-Mulhideen, yani, the atheist people or whatever. They ask this question, and if you do not know Allah, because now you said we cannot imagine how Allah is written everything upon us, and we also should do وَقَلِعْمَلُوا فَسَيْرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ For the question here is coming that, how could you worship someone, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't know uh, b b the simple question, the La, simplest question is, in the world, so which is type, Allah has written everything upon us, why we have to make dua, why we have to worship? He so, written upon us, will we be in Jannah or hellfire? Why so we have it's to- It's a very simple yeah, response to this. You do not know what is written. So you yeah, assume, so you assume what okay. is written is what you want. Let me ask in, in different way, Sheikh. Being that Allah has written, you will be in Jannah or, or hellfire, والعياذ بالله. Why he is punishing you and he written before you come that you will be among hellfire people or Jannah people? Jayid, so this question has been asked since the beginning of time before Islam. No. And it was asked يعني, in the time and Iblis himself is making i'tirad of Allah Azza wa Jal that qala rabbi bima aghwaytani. Iblis no. himself, يعني, you know, ihtajjab al qadr. He used qadr to justify what he had done. You, you were the one who did this. You set it up basically. It was already flawed from the beginning. And at some level, the question is, Sheikh, why Allah is punishing Iblis? Yeah, the, the, so la, 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 the, this is the question. This is why like Halaj is, himself said yeah, the same Sheikh, thing. And I'm asking the question that why he is punishing Iblis and he written upon Iblis, he will be disobeying Allah. So this is the question. So this Why question, he's punishing non-believers and he has written upon them, they will be non-believers before so even they this, came. This, the, again, Sheikh, you're asking, mashallah, very philosophical questions and this Q&A has yeah, okay. 10 questions. Okay. And the, the, I have given actually, a, not just an entire lecture, I've written a paper about this topic. Every single firqa from the Mu'tazila to the Maturidi to the Asha'ila to the Atharis has a response to this, every firqa. No. But, and I'm being honest with you, every one of their responses, it will not satisfy the philosopher. It no. will not satisfy even that the Amri. That simply, so, people are so, Jabreen. So, we are deterministic people, so, that's it. No, I don't believe this at all. Al-Aqs, Al-Aqs, al al no. The, to say that we are Jabri, uh, yes, yes, yes. no, I don't. He wrote everything on you. Yeah, so and you don't know don't, how to fix the problem or how to answer the question. No, we don't know what is written. Sheikh, we don't have even free will to think about the answer of the question. No, we not, not free will. We don't have the we don't have the, the level of, of, of uh, intelligence. We don't well, have that the means free will. We don't have this free will. Sheikh, we are finite beings. Allah created us. No. Again, this is we not my view, our, just I'm conveying the views. We have, okay. to put, we have to humble ourselves. We didn't choose our life. We that didn't choose we are to Jabri. be created. Okay. We, we didn't Jabri. choose the circumstances of our birth. We didn't choose the era we yes, were born in. Yes, that means we didn't prove choose. that we are Jabris. So it's not a matter of Jabris. We thank Allah for existence. Sheikh, how come existence, that you don't choose to be born? You don't choose, will you go Jannah or Nar? And you still not because Jabri. Because right now, the way you act is completely free will. What you are saying right now is coming from your free will. But Allah That's why I'm saying. It. So you don't allow the intellectual affirmation of Allah's majesty to affect your actions. No. You don't do this for your daily routine. You don't do this for eating and drinking. You don't do this for your job. You don't do this for your risk. Only when it comes to the deen and when it comes to believing in Allah, do such people come and start saying, oh, how, why should I worship Allah when Allah Azza wa Jal has written something? When it comes to eating and drinking, they don't just sit there and say, if Allah has will, is gonna jump into my mouth, right? So they selectively use this hujjah when it comes to religiosity and when it comes to deen. They never are consistent. If no, no, they were no, no, no. consistent. And, and for me now, when I'm conveying the question, I'm asking about everything, yeah. even the food, even eating and drinking. So nobody lives their life according to this philosophy. No. Only when it comes to tadayun and religiosity and belief do they start no, bringing up. No, they start asking. Her Jabal Qadr. Okay, because of so, the time, yeah, go ahead. So, you wanted no, to conclude something? Yeah, the conclusion yeah, is very simple. Yep. In, in my we humble opinion, to, in my humble opinion we affirm Allah's majesty and we live our lives as if we have complete free will. 
This no. is the solution of this problem because you will never understand. Yani the, 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 the assumption that you will be able to fully comprehend Qadr is the assumption that you will your ilm will understand Allah's ilm. Your ilm will understand Allah's ilm. And this is a very arrogant assumption. Allah created us. Our ilm is mahdood, ma'qool is I'm very... I'm talking about ilm, I'm talking about al-mashi'ah. The, so and the same goes. My question was so simple. Goes. But you said that we cannot even think about it. I, I Actually, think... Sheikh Jabri people, they said, was su'alu anhu bid'a. Yani it's the same thing. Khalas, we are Jabriyin and we cannot and we have not. We must not ask about this, uh, yani about these uh, questions. So, Sheikh, and that's the, it. Khalas, the, we problem, jabri, khalas. the problem comes the other group brings yeah. a very valid point and that is that to claim to claim that Allah has no control over the creation is really tanqis it is a no. it is a, a very very uh, disrespectful thing to say which actually what eliminates the said, but I'm, which I'm, actually eliminates the they yeah, chose their, their way. way I don't and agree with them but they, they said yeah, that's, خلاص, that's, انت yeah. مخير completely yeah. Allah does not uh, create evil yes and if you make evil you are the one who choose that and these issues, and I don't believe in that just I, I need another question another yes. answer fixes the problem so these issues Sheikh have been debated for thousands of years yeah. and all of the firaq and frankly Nobody has an answer that is a five minute long that convinces no. the mukhalif. No, no. You only convince your own group. No, no. This is what I'm saying. You see Ra'i al you see it yourself that this question is beyond the capability of the average person to understand. Really, no. No. you see this because you tell me, we have yani, 4,000 years of recorded philosophical history. We have history beyond religion. We have the philosophers who didn't believe in any religion. Nobody has solved this problem in a simplistic five minute solution that people can understand. So do you think that we can solve it right here? It's not gonna happen. The response, Shaykh is where there should be a level of humility that what can I understand, what cannot understand? And we have to also deal with waqir. You exist. You exist right here and now. Okay, what are you gonna do with your existence? You have to think about who created me. What is the purpose of existence? Shaykh, What's gonna happen after, I'm, I'm after my Shaykh, death? And my answer about this issue, it's so simple. Being that we cannot know and understand like what you said, choose your situation your your position either you mukhayyar like mu'tazila or you jabri like uh, you know the uh, you should act and these like you're mukhayyar ya jabri ya mukhayyar ya, ya musayyar even the jabri oh, acts like they're mukhayyar that's the reality mm. only when it comes to tadayyun they say oh we're no. jabr majbur no. but when it comes to everything else even the hardcore jabri no. lives his life like he's mukhayyar طيب شيخنا انا اي نو ذا كويشنز ار ار سو ديفيكلت اند اتس نوت جات ايزي تو انسرد ان كيو ان اي يعني سيشنز بس ليت اس جو رايت اواي تو ذا ثيرد كويشن ان عقدي كويشنز اند ناو ادايز از ستارت كومينج ذات كان وي ميك دعاء فور نون بليفرز سبيشلي اف ذي ار هامبل اند ذي ار بيسفول كان وي ميك دعاء فور ذيم كان وي براي فور ذيم المغفره والرحمه وي كان ديفينتلي براي فور ذيم وين ذي ار الايف 110% نو بروبلم We okay. make dua for them, Allah guides them. No. And even something good in their life, like yeah. if somebody doesn't have children, may Allah bless you with children, no problem. Why it's before in their life yeah. and so, after them. Yeah, oh, but uh, again, uh, right now let us speak with what the majority, what is the default position. The default position, even within the most يعني, strict, is that dua can be done in their lifetime for anything no. maslaha diniya, And maslah dunyawiyya if the person yes like no problem like no. if he's a good person yeah may Allah bless you with good risk whatnot yeah. no problem now the issue comes after they pass away yeah as you are aware this is actually the question yeah as you are aware okay so this so, so the yeah. question is about that uh, okay yeah. okay so as you are aware that uh, the vast majority of fuqaha and ulama it's not just one firqa this is the vast majority they say that the one who dies in a state that is outside of Islam we remain silent about him. And we do not uh, say whether he's going here or there. We leave his affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do not make dua. The reason why they say this is because, as you're aware, there are three verses in the Quran. No. And there's the incident uh, in the life of the Prophet, again, from Sunni sources, because the Shia don't believe in this, but the Sunni sources uh, believe this, that no. Abu Talib uh, passed away outside of Islam. And uh, the Prophet wanted to make istighfar. As you're aware, this uh, athad is found, uh, this hadith is found in Bukhari. and in many of the books of the Sunnah. Based upon this, pretty much yani, the default position is that once the person has passed away outside the fold of Islam, we remain quiet and we don't make dua uh, for them. Now, 
I have a qawl that is not against this. It is within it, inshallah. And even the critic, inshallah, will not really find room for criticism, right? If somebody wants to go beyond this, that's upon them and let them take the criticism. As for me, I have a qawl that is, yani, inshallah, there is uh, some ihtimal here. We do not verbalize istighfar for the kafir, but it is permissible for the person whose family member, whose loved one, yani, you know, was an innocent person who didn't, he didn't, yani, he wasn't a reject, a mu'anid. He wasn't somebody who's adu, like Abu Jahl or somebody. Yani, adi rajul. It's permissible for that person to hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive that relative. And this is now, based with on- With the feeling, not with the verbal Yes, let, let the- What's the difference here? So the verbalization is explicit in the Quran. La, in the right. Quran, but let me talk with you. No, you so, but Sheikh, so if you, you are free, Sheikh, so you are free to, let me finish yeah. oh, Go ahead, go ahead. You are free to hold your view, you're asking me nah, my yeah, view. Yeah, yeah, of course, of okay. course, of course, of course. You, you want my view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isa, Isa, you said in the Quran, says, I wanted to convey to you the Quran. Says, uh, okay, no. here, Isa, Isa alayhi salam did not say, oh Allah, forgive them. No, but he, he, being Sheikh. that he has possibility, yeah, 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 so being that he I has possibility. I didn't finish, there's the, the, the verse of Ibrahim as well. Go ahead. The verse of Ibrahim as well, right? Yeah, so, uh, uh, so uh, 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 yeah. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌ لِلَّهِ وَذَا وَرْدُ فَعَدُوٌ لِلَّهِ Allah yeah. explained in Surah Al-Mumtahana, عَدُوِّي وَعَدُوَكُمْ يُخْرِجُونَ الرَّسُولِ إِذْ كَانَ مُحَارِبًا خلاص فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ بَعْدَ أَنْ رَمَاهُ فِي النَّارِ So this is a position that I've heard. وَلَكِنْ وَقَالْ كَانَ مِنَ الضَّلِّينَ اغْفِرْ لِأَبِي هَلْ كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ ضَعِفِ الْعَقِيدَةِ جيد. So I I know a number of modern scholars are saying this opinion. That's their opinion. I'm not, يعني, uh, But ما ردك على إنه كان من الضالين. So, uh, yeah, so كان Allah من says in the Quran, لقد كان لكم أسوة حسن في إبراهيم ولد معه إذ قال إلا قول إلا قول إبراهيم لبي. إلا قول. So Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, you have a good role model in Ibrahim and all that he has done, except when he said, Oh Allah. Forgive my father. Because so, the surah, Sheikhna, it talks about al-muharibin. Yeah. So, Jayid, so you are saying yep. that this verse applies to Abu Lahab, Al-Muharib. Abu Lahab, نعم, نعم. and it does not apply to Abu Talib. Naam, Abu Talib, but riwayat Abu Talib has issues. Jayid. لا. So yeah, this uh, is your opinion. Yes, okay. Yeah, and you have the right to hold your opinion. But also Sheikh Sayyidina Ibrahim said, opinion. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna just to convey the ayat which other Jayid. group are using it to, okay. to also listen to your view about it. Okay, in my Ibrahim, view, okay. in my view, the, 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 the Muslim convert whose parents, whose siblings, whatever passed away, and you know, there's love in that person, we give him some hope. We no. give him some hope that, no. you know? Not verbally. But Sayyidina Ibrahim in Surah Ibrahim, he said clearly now, forget about إنه كان من الضلين, his father. No, he was talking about his people. رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ this isn't, this isn't a dua specific. What do you mean فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ It's a, it's a تلميح, it's an ishara. That's okay, what, exactly my this point. This is the possibility which I'm talking That's, about. So, so Sheikh, being we're, that we're I'm allowing, giving you possibility, if allowing, I have, if what did I just say? He no. can hope. It's exactly what I said. No, but, but Ibrahim did not say, oh my Lord, forgive the idol worship. He said, oh my Lord, forgive my dad. He was misguided. And Allah says, don't follow him in this. No, he said, فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ إِلَّا قَوْلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ لَا أَسْتَغْفِرَنَّ لَكَ, yeah. لك so بَعْدِي So he said, don't do this. Okay, in, in Surah At-Tawbah, Shaykh Nas. Shaykh, so this is your ta'wil. Good okay, for you, I don't agree with this. In Surah At-Tawbah, it's so clear when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said, مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا الْمُشْرِكِ الْمُشْرِكِ الْمُحَارِبِ Surah At-Tawbah, كُلَّ مُشْرِكِ مُحَارِبِ وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمِ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَمَّ مَوْعِدَةٍ وَعَدَاءِ إِيَّا فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّهُ عَدُوُّ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّعَ مِنْ التَبْرِئَةَ comes after العداوة وهذه العداوة في سورة a explicit, yani, uh, 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 explicit commandment نعم. that do not ask istighfar for the mushrikeen. نعم. So your mafhum al-mukhalafa is a lower status than yes. the... Al-mushrik al-muharib, nahnu ma'murun ba'adam al-istighfar lahu, kama qala Ibrahim li abi, yeah. inno istighfar lu, ikhfir li abi, inno kana min al-dalli. So Khalas this is your opinion, dhalli. Sheikh. Yeah, you yeah. ask me my opinion, okay, and just, I, I don't... Fa inta you, you know. with hope, you have not problem, you don't have problem, but verbally you have you problem. You do not, yeah. And what is the difference between them? A big difference. This is in in your heart, and in your heart, you it should be more Sheikh, hope, uh, hope, hope. Yes, hope you in your heart. Yes. Yani, if no you problem. hope no and problem. you feel in your heart, because hope is thiqa billah. 
Hope is yes. affirming. Oh, but Allah has forbidden you to verbalize. What is the purpose, Sheikh, from Allah to, let, to forbid us to verbalize it, but it's okay to feel it? What is the difference? So if you're asking, again, this position, as you're aware, is 99.999% of the ummah. You're aware of it. This is the default position yeah. of the ummah. The response would be very clear, and that is, there is an adab that we have yeah. for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And those who reject Allah, they don't deserve an outward adab in this manner. No. But Allah knows their fate because even يعني, the one who dies in the state of kufr, even the, the most, يعني, you know, uh, well, not everybody, I should say, no. most of the firaq say it is possible for the one who did not know Islam, did not know haqiqat, you know, tawheed, did not know hadith Muhammad, it is possible for, the, for them to be forgiven in the akhirah. This is something the vast majority, Ibn Taymiyyah says this, Al Ghazali says, everybody says no. this, right? No. But they also say, but do not ask Allah to forgive them. How do they make jamma of this? Very clear. The one is a hope, the one, and the other is su al adab. Because when you verbalize, right, it's a type of iqrar. But لو كانت سوء الأدب يا شيخنا لما لمح إليها إبراهيم وعيسى عيسى clearly said if you forgive them. No, but but this is not explicit, like I said. Again, the point here, which we're talking about it, Sheikh, I do طبعا respect your view, but the point again is, I I don't have it. Like feel something, but it's wrong. To talk about it, the iman it comes with the feeling as a first. So again, the iman, يعني عقيدة feeling وعمل إحساس وعمل يعني كيف أنت أؤمن بشيء و hope something but don't say it. What's the point here? Because if I hope the, that Allah will forgive them. The only reason we're saying this for because the the Quran علماء is شيخ, explicit in this. Most of علماء and you know better than me. Most of فقهاء be said that uh, if your wife dies and uh, you can just uh, stop giving uh, the money of the kafan for the wife if she dies. يعني I can bring you thousands of opinions. Ninety percent of علماء agreed about something, and it's not. But uh, who said that all of them were agreeing about that? It could comes as a political issues or something. Because it does yeah. not make sense. Jay, like I said, you're not the only one that says this, uh, but no. any, it's not the position I hold. Jazakallah khair, Sheikhna. Okay. We're going to continue, inshallah. Okay, Question inshallah. number four. Now, inshallah, the question is the fourth, and it's a question of politics to Dr. Yasser Qadi. Dr. Yasser, do Muslims should participate in uh, politics affairs? Politically, do Muslims should participate? This is the first question. And here in America, which group, uh, like let us say Republican, Democrats, which group you prefer or which group you see that they will help uh, actually Muslim people politically? Jayid. So if you look at the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't make this distinction between political affairs versus social affairs. He wanted to effect change. He wanted to bring about positive change in every single way possible. Sometimes the most effective way you only can verbally do. And other times the most effective way you go to the politicians and you negotiate with them, right? So you look at your situation. But to say that Islam is not about politics, to say that Islam tells you to not get involved, la, this is very incorrect. Islam is an entire system of living one's life. And a part of that living is how you interact with other people and how society functions. Even, even so, if you live in different country, that a country does not uh, actually practice so Islamic you do, laws. You, you affect change in whatever way is feasible. You affect as much change as you can. And the, the how you affect it and the techniques and tools you use will change from time to time and place to place. What the Prophet said and did in Medina is not the same as what you could say and do in Mecca in terms of yani, influencing politically. But he did try to influence in every single majal. So to say that we, one should not get involved in politics, yani, no, this is- They say, Sheikh, we are living now in America in Western land, and they, so, those who are yeah, criticizing sorry. you, they said that we, uh, the democracy for them is kufr, is haram, that you cannot participate in something haram. This is what they, they believe. Yeah, I mean, this, this type of statement or sentiment, frankly, it is a very small, narrow-minded group, even mainstream Salafis and Deobandis and whatnot, the, the kibar of all of these, yani, what I would call fundamentalist movements, they give have clear fatwas that as Muslim minorities, you must protect your rights, you must have the freedom to worship. And if that means lobbying the government, if that means fighting for your rights politically, if that means going to congressmen and whatnot and, and making sure the right people are in office, then you must do that. So this notion that- The notion itself is okay with you. Of course, you must yeah. participate, yeah. But the question is, to what level and to what level of compromise? And I have given a, a longer yeah, interview online. Yeah, I so khulasa no, I will no. say, the, in my humble opinion, 
علماء دعاة مشايخ it is not healthy for them to jump into the realm of siyasa because it corrupts the purity of their ilm. But there are people that are involved in siyasa that the ulama should have correct direct contact with. And I call them the soft pragmatists and the soft purists. I have a much longer discussion about this, right? Because siyasa, politics is all about the lesser of two evils. It's about compromise. It's about bringing about some, uh, some group of people to effect change. And in the process, you have to give and take. And a, a, a person who is upon uh, uh, ilm and basira, and a person who is wanting to preach morality and the truth cannot give and take the truth. You cannot compromise upon the haqq, right? So my assessment of the reality we live in in the Western world and the Western lands, ulama and mashayikh should not be at the forefront of direct political activism. They should be one step behind. They should speak generically and they should encourage the right people and they should be in touch with the right people. But they should not, in my humble opinion, lead. This is my opinion. I could be wrong, I could be right. This is my opinion. The reason why they should not lead is because when you jump into politics, by nature of the game that is played, yep. you must compromise. And when you compromise, then your ilm is affected, your wara is affected, your taqwa is affected. And I have been very blunt in this regard. I would not want you know, my brother, my student, my, I would not want a person whose priority is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to corrupt that purity by compromising on the deen and entering politics. But there will be people who will be entering politics, whether I want it or not. So there's hell, it is healthy for me to be in touch with them and to advise them and to tell them to choose the lesser of two evils, even if I myself don't want to be in their position. And it is healthy for us as a community to see which of the two politicians is better for what we have in mind. Now, what do we have in mind? We have many things in mind. It's not just foreign policy. It's not just Palestine. That's one of them. It's not just, but the Uyghur situation. Yeah. Suppose there's a politician mm. and yani, whatever reason, he's like, I am against what the, the Chinese people are doing to the Uyghurs, right? That's a very big positive. And why not, if, if, if there's no negatives against him, why not do we support him and say, this is a politician, he's gonna campaign, he's gonna lobby. Change is very slow in this regard. Right? Yani sometimes so, even participation of uh, politics sometimes will be like an obligatory action, sometimes. Without a doubt, I agree. Yep. And this actually, uh, as I said in my longer interview that I did, those of us who lived through 9-11, you know, 23 years ago. You were there, right? Sheikh. I I yeah, I yeah. those of us who lived through 9-11, yep. this notion of participating in politics is haram and kufr, it was thrown out the window. Hmm. You had to get involved to fight for your rights. You had to stand up and say, this is dhulma, you can't take me to jail for no reason, you cannot <laughs> harass me. Qadr, qadr, you can't. <laughs> no. This is jabriya, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so those that were in alive yeah. at that time, right? The whole notion of politics being haram, democracy being haram, it was out the window. Actually, interestingly, you are Masri, ya Sheikh, right? When uh, the Arab Spring happened, huh? Yeah. when the Arab Spring happened and there was actual hurriya for a little period of time about democracy. Those same mashayikh that said democracy is kufr, the same mashayikh said voting is now jihad. Voting is now jihad. And they said, I was wrong 10 years ago. I didn't understand what is democracy. Now that I understand that you can, you can elect a person who wants uh, the sharia, you can elect a person who fears Allah and his messenger, you can elect a person who is gonna bring about a qanun that is closer to good morality. How can you not get involved to get somebody who's closer to what you want? So the same mashayikh, I don't wanna mention names because I don't wanna embarrass, but the same tayyarat yani, that you are critical of, the same tayyarat that used to say the same trends, that used to say that uh, democracy is kufr, and participating and voting is kufr. That same sheikh, a number of them actually then changed their minds and said, you know what? Uh, going to the ballot and voting is now an obligatory action, fard ayn. And it is a jihad that is now needs to be done because this is our modern jihad. So al dhuruf the context taught them what they could not have understood from books. So we say to those mashayikh that say democracy is kufr and this and that, we say to them that yani, come and live amongst us. Okay, Sheikh. See this reality yeah. amongst us. Uh, the second part of the question, when it comes in America, let's talk about America, we have two groups of people, the politicians, either from uh, Republicans, uh, Republicans and, Democrats. and Democrats. What do you prefer? 
Each one of them has their pros and cons and Muslims are neither Republican nor Democrats. We have our own masalih and our own mafasid. And we have to be very careful not to ally ourselves with any one party to the exclusion of the other because neither party represents our interest in totality. For sometimes you so go there sometimes and sometimes you go there. we can do this, yes, exactly. Okay. And this is politics. Yeah. <laughs> This is exactly what politics is. We look at our masalih and mafasid like every group does. And when our masalih and mafasid are better with one group, we will go with them for that issue. But our loyalties will not be to that group. And we have seen this in the last 10 years, right? No. We have seen this ra'y al ain when it comes to fawahish and LGBT and all of this. We have seen that when the Muslims gravitated towards the left and they went towards the uh, Democratic uh, Party by and large, Many of those Muslims, right, their loyalties came onto the Democratic Party rather than Allah and His Messenger. And when the party went the way it went with transgender and this and that. But they were like the, this, Sheikh. And yeah, everyone but, knows from yeah. them from 30 so, years so they, that they have this open minded with everything. Why about this question? We have to be with them when we need them. And we knew already that the they had this open The ideal solution is to have our own party. We knew that the Democrat Party has this open-minded for LGBT and all this stuff uh, three decades before. And we knew that 10 years ago when we wanted them. It's and the we went and we ran to Jayid. them. It's and the now when it comes to just, we are okay now and we don't need them more. Now we start criticizing, oh, you are open-minded on these views. It's the, the criticism issue, it comes to us, Sheikh, not to them. They are clear than, more, more than it's us. It's the issue of context and level. When our context was that our existence in America is being existentially threatened. We are being told you're gonna to leave this country. Our masjids are being shut down. Yeah. At that point in time, our priority but comes. The other group still believe our... in this also as well. And yani for example, Sheikh Biden or Trump? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't get involved in these specific names and let the people of the khassos. It's not my job to tell the people which one is better for the ummah. It's my job to teach the principles. Is my job to be very generic in the this principles regard. of democracy is better never, than the and principles I have of never, I have never endorsed a specific conservatives. candidate. I have never endorsed or fundraised for a specific candidate. I yeah. have never given a khutbah vote for this person versus that person. But we speak in generics and we speak that which better? Yeah, so the rights or the left? Let's say this. I don't forget I about don't, the names. At this point in time, honestly, neither is good. <laughs> like at this point in time, well, what are you gonna do? You yeah, still participate? Yeah. So we. So in my opinion. Politics is more local than national. In my opinion, one of our biggest problems is we concentrate on the presidential elections and we don't concentrate on our local school board, on the local person who's running for the city council. The city councilman has more impact on our masjid than our democratic yani, yeah. uh, uh, you know, presidential last, last candidate. Last thing in this, uh, Sheikh Matar, now uh, some of Republican people uh, five years ago or something, they banned uh, many Muslim people to even enter the country. Will uh, some Muslim people now, they go and they said, because of other party is taking us away from the, you know, the moderate views or something. Now, some people said, we gonna uh, vote for those who five years ago banned a lot of Muslims to even enter the country. What do you think about this? So let us hope that we can influence these people from stopping uh, this ban, because that is what is happening. The same Republican party that hated us so much, many of them are recognizing that we can help them in the fight for morality, in the fight for family values. That's but why- don't, Sheikh, Some of them, they don't why, need you. That's why. So it depends on state to state. Alhamdulillah, in some states they need, in some zones, zip codes, they need us. Without a doubt, they need us. In zip codes in New York and Chicago, in Dallas. They need us Dallas, or they right? want to use us. So, so we use them. It's a two-way street, Sheikh Hana. That's what politics how, is. How to use someone he does not need you or does not want you to be here. Yeah, but. Uh, how, how to use someone he this, has the racism against yeah, you, this, against your race, against so your religion. So the specifics of this goes back to Ahl al takhassus the people Who of- Who is Ahl al takhassus Those that are involved in politics, it's not me. Uh, but they are supporting now LGBT and these stuff. Not everybody, Sheikh. There are people amongst them, we know them, I know them. There are people amongst them, fi'lan mutadayyineen. There are people that are involved in politics, they pray five times a day, they are avoiding the kaba'ir. They have actually, I cannot mention names as amana, they have come to me saying, what can we say in this difficult issue? How do we phrase these things? You know what? So there are people, Alhamdulillah, there are people. And I would much rather these people who have some ikhlas and some wara and some taqwa, they're worried. 
I have people, I cannot mention names, very high level, uh, phone me, contact me, reach me, you, you and they say, I names. cannot mention their names, and they cannot even talk publicly with but the But they're asking me, How Muslim people they're will asking do. me, yeah, what is the phrasing that I don't have to be worried about on the day of judgment? This is, shows they have Iman. Yep. It shows they have Iman. Tamam, but okay. this added tachassus, they cannot deliver their views to regular Muslim people. What about the regular Muslim people? What they have to do? So they listen Make to the, the election. They, they, Will they, they go to the right or the left? Uh, Regular so, Muslim people. Sheikh, there is no way one answer will fit all the problems. No way. You cannot say to the Muslims, vote right or left. You look at every election, every office, every person, every single election at every level no, you look answer. at. No. And you then say, Masalih al Mafasid on this and on this and on this. And you work your way from top to bottom. Yeah. And even in this, you will find ikhtilaf. No. So be it. Good answer from uh, Sheikh Nashikh Yasser. Okay, uh, let us go with the last question in the Aqidah matters actually about the music. And I think. Uh, aqidah music? Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, Sheikh, huh? because they, they. You made music yep, into Aqidah. Yeah, I will tell you why. Because <laughs> okay. some people, they believe that if you love music, music you will raise the nifaq in your heart. For sure, it comes with aqidah. Oh, I see matters. what you're saying there. Okay, the, yeah. uh, music is a fiqh issue, but you are saying- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I make okay. it with aqidah issue because okay. some people think and believe that if you listen, listen to the music much, you will raise a nifaq in your heart. To rabbi nifaq. What do you think about that? No, so this is multiple issues now. Again, um, uh, the issue of uh, music, firstly, what do you mean by it, music? Because even music has multiple. Do you mean- uh, Beautiful voice. We talked about maqamat. No, we no, talked no. about taghani. We talked. I'm about, not talking about this. I'm talking okay. about alat Allah. Okay. So now, even alat, as you are aware, yeah, there is a distinction that has been made from yeah. the time of the, the tabi'un. The fluent. I'm talking about from the, alat from, yeah. from the time of the tabi'un to the tabi'un. The distinction has been made between the sounds that come from hitting something versus the sounds that come from blowing into something. This distinction comes from the earliest, uh, and some would even say the Sahaba, but for sure, without any doubt, this distinction is found in the Tabi'un. But Abdullah right? ibn Ja'far, and we have uh, so we have Athar. So we have very clear distinctions from the past that lots of people allowed that which you hit, like a type of duff or a drum or something. And they were rakhasu. They didn't find this to be that problematic, right? No. And this, yani, it goes back to the fact, actually, you can just do this and have the noise coming. So, no. so what if you make it a little bit more than this, right? So by and large, those uh, instruments in which it's uh, percussions, they call it, and basically you're hitting something. There's much more tasamuh even from the past in this regard. And even very conservative, as you're aware, even the very conservative ulama say, yes, it is allowed in, uh, uh, nikah or in other places or walima or something or Eid it I'm is not talking about duf like now Sheikh I'm talking about yeah no so I'm saying so, but yeah, yeah. so I have okay, to be careful good, I have good. to clarify we have to explain, have yeah, to yeah, explain yeah. Sheikh yeah. Yeah, Sheikh. so we're not talking about that then nah. so then the issue comes then about uh, what is called wind instruments right yeah. what's instruments the problem that, to make a voice like this and to make <laughs> this is haram and this is halal. You what, have a very good wind, wind instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Why this is it's a good has matters. So someone another. like you doesn't even need wind instrument. You just use your, <laughs> use your voice. Yeah. What is the problem here? <laughs> Jaya, Sheikh. So you're talking again about an issue that transcends me and you. It is beyond me and you. It goes back to the very tabi'un and even sahaba. And we find this back and forth. So Sheikh, if you notice, yani, alhamdulillah, I have given thousands and thousands of lectures. Maha, we need right? two minutes, Sheikh, just so, to so, so memorize, if you notice, it. this issue, I have not given a detailed lecture about. Whoa, I have not given a detailed lecture that, about, Sheikh. okay? Wow. One day I will. But one of the reasons I haven't is because I find that it is difficult to hold a academic intellectual conversation about this topic. People no. are emotional. And when you're dealing with emotion, you cannot talk academics. And people have made up their minds in a way that uh, it becomes unreasonable to discuss. Ya imma bil jawaz, ya imma bil tahrim. And there is no middle ground. There's no. Yani, Do you have something in the middle? So, without a doubt, Sheikh Al Karim, without a doubt, the music industry as it currently stands is an industry of filth and fahsha. This is, you cannot deny this. The music industry around the globe as the default, as the asl. Can explain this more, Sheikh? The, what is the music industry about? It is about zina, it is about 
haram relationships. It is about nakedness and videos of this manner, suggestiveness, lewdness. It is about all types of shahawat and whatnot. This is wahidan, just the music haram industry, yeah, Sheikh. Yeah. The music industry. Just I wanted to explain yeah, yeah. what it's, details. You cannot so, deny yeah. this. Yani. Okay, that's, yeah. that's fine. The, about so ba, yeah. so when uh, somebody comes and wants to say music is halal, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, open your eyes and look at this reality. How can you just make this blanket statement without yeah. looking at the waqir? Yeah. Right? And then you have the opposite view as well, that music is haram, and then they consider every single thing, including sometimes alat al or the percussion instruments, without even thinking things through. Yeah. So my position, Shaykhan, is that these types of, of, uh, these types of uh, industries should not be encouraged. They no. should not be encouraged. No. And there's a reason why from the beginning of time, the people of ilm and taqwa, the people of ikhlas and zuhd and ibadah, by and large, we did not find them involved in this type of industry. There's a reason, Sheikh. No. That reason is that these instruments, the least that you can say about them, forget the word haram and, and, and makru, right? Now, just the least you can say about them, these types of instruments, what they do is they they bring about a level of uh, desire or shahwa lust. or lust, yeah. Yeah. right? And one wonders what is the fa'idah of bringing about that lust when it's happening in public? When And that is why from the beginning of time, these instruments are associated with nudity, with women and men dancing. Mm -hmm. From This is beyond any one culture. And Think actually, about this it. this is the hadith. Ibn Hazm says this, when yeah. he combined the, the parts it, exactly, of the hadith. Yes, yes, the hadith of Bukhari. Yeah. Yeah. Wal -harir wal -harir wal so, yeah. yeah, that's one interpretation. I'm not even getting there. I'm simply being factual here. Mm -hmm. Why is it that this industry in every civilization from the beginning of time is always associated with khamr and with zina and with women dancing and with nudity? Why? What is the relationship? The relationship is, forget haram and makru. These sounds will automatically, you are flirting with your own shahawat. You are provoking in a manner. Just like if you smell good food, your hunger is gonna start going. Huh? So music to your shahwa is like smelling the good food, you know, yeah. to your button. So let's leave haram and whatnot. Let's just be factual. No. That what about if you take this with your halal, with your wife? Yeah, so now, now for those who say, for halal. those who say that certain types of music are halal, I say to them, be very clear with these dawabit and these shurut. Nobody should say music halal is halal. Halal or haram. I, I don't agree with this simplicity. Both of them. I don't agree. Yeah, okay. But I actually your, your view, I can tell that in the middle and you, uh, if you say halal, you will say it, but with conditions and terms, with aspects. And if you say uh, haram also, you will bring with also conditions and aspects. Is that right, Shaykh? Bizzabt, yeah. Tamam. Uh, uh, it was a good answer, <laughs> mashallah. Let us go, inshallah, to the fiqhi. Uh, things, inshallah, bi ta'ala, the sixth question and seventh and, uh, and the ninth and eighth and the ninth and tenth will be about a fiqhi uh, matters bi ta'ala. Let us go with the question number six. Question number six, Sheikhna, will be about uh, marriages uh, and divorce, uh, divorces affairs. Uh, general uh, ulama, ulama in general, they uh, accept to have the divorce as a verbal divorce. When you say anti talaq, that means she is divorced. And they are not even uh, writing the talaq. If you just say it, it will happen. But in the way of marriage uh, or marriages, they don't do that. First of all, I have two questions here. First of all, how the Prophet and the Sahaba وسلم, were getting married and making divorce? Were they writing the marriage contract? And from where the concept of marriages contracts come? Uh, I wanted to ask this question. And then the second question, why secret marriage, it's not permissible like for 90% from al-fuqaha? Jayid, so uh, with regards to marriages, طبعًا, what is obligatory is not to write down. No alim ever said you have to write down. What is obligatory is that it is, it is ishhar or shahidain. Maliki say that ishhar يعني, has to be public and, and whatnot or two witnesses. But so, nobody does that now. No, in the so marriages, when, they have to write contract. Yeah, but, yeah but, but it happens in public and there's two witnesses there. That's the main point here. So no, no doubt to write it is better. 
Allah says in the Quran, فَكْتُبُوهُ يعني, Oh, every, any contract, any contract. It's, you should okay. write it down. But what is obligatory, fiqhan, from the Sharia perspective, is that people witness it. I'm not asking about the obligatory action. I'm asking about how the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba were getting married. Yeah, there were was they never, writing there was the contract? Write, they, they didn't write anything back then. Why people now, they are, they are yeah, and because so the tough Quran to write. Because the Quran encourages writing contracts when yeah, you the can. The Quran is encouraging and the Prophet did not obey the Quran. Yeah, because the writing itself was rare in that time frame, as you're aware. But we have it to was limit a, it. It was an Ummiyah nation. No problem. Right, yeah. And so, now there is our online things. Why they stick, uh, st stay yeah, also, and, so uh, I can't go and change the papers. Papers. And, uh, That's the way they live their lives. They didn't have writing material. They didn't have paper even. Do you understand how difficult it is to write when you don't have paper? They would literally have to write on, يعني, you know. The, okay, but the, the, now we have so, online stuff, but people still think that you have to write it like written things yeah, on we'll, the papers. Yeah, we'll teach and, them. I mean, the, any fiqh class yeah. will tell you, you don't have to write it, but you have to witness. There must be witnesses. So your view... Written the contract is not obligatory act. Uh, nobody and people says Aslan could get married without writing anything. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Verbally will be okay. Verbally with shuhud, yes, hundred percent. Oh, surprised me, Hundred percent. Okay. Oh. Now the uh, the question comes: If you're living in an Islamic land with an Islamic system, right? I'm not talking about this. No, should not the government Sheikh, be aware? Talking, there is civil... no Islamic land now. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying nobody... I'm saying hypothetical. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying ideal. That ideal. Sheikh, ideal. Na, we, we are talking about dreams. Yeah, I'm talking jayil, about al-waqa, actual waqa. And la, la, Muslim la, la, people, 99% of them, I would they encourage. do not accept Sorry. marriages without a written contract. So this is healthy. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, healthy, why healthy. they don't do it with the divorce stuff? Yeah. So the the you're asking Sheikh about our questions again. To be brutally honest, Sheikh, I, I, I'm seeing now the questions you're asking, they are wanting to rethink through issues of fiqh. And that's fine, no problem. But understand that this right doesn't belong to me or other people. This right, this right is a very big issue. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows talaq without witnesses and Allah allows marriage and conditions witnesses. This is something that all of the fuqaha accepted. No faqih ever said, talaq needs two witnesses, as far as I'm aware. No faqih said this. No. Every faqih said that nikah has to have some type of, ya imma ishhar, no. ya imma no. yani publicity, ya imma. Okay. So okay. now, someone problematizes this. You are problematizing this, right? Laka haq, you have the right to ask, you have the right to question. I don't have the right to change the sharia, Shaykhana. I don't have the right to change what the entirety of the ummah did. Whether Even I if they are doing something the Prophet no. didn't do it? No, but Sheikh, you're, uh, uh, how From so where the mean? source of the Sharia? Ah? If the fuqaha now, what, what, if the people now? No, Sheikh, there's nothing wrong with writing the contract. There's a no, difference. There is nothing wrong with that, but yeah. being you make it as an obligatory thing, I this is the wrong thing. Yeah, I agree with, I with your view. Yeah. I, I got surprised. To be yeah, I did not say that. Right. Another question that, uh, what about the secret marriage? Why also many ulama, they prohibited it? What, what is the point? And ما أقل so, الإشهار? I, أقل الإشهار الشاهدين, two, two witnesses. It's still a secret marriage. Yeah, so I believe secret marriages, 99% of them are doomed to fail. And I believe secret marriages, even if they're done with all the conditions, two witnesses, whatnot, that 99% of the time, the woman will end up with a broken heart and she will feel abused and she will feel taken advantage of. And the man has gotten away with some okay, enjoyment. The with question the woman. here is, it is permissible or no? Sharia. Sharia issue permissible. now. Yeah. If the conditions are met, I cannot. The condition make a is haram. there: two witnesses and two ishhar. Two people will yeah, so make ishhar. And there is agreement. Ishhar, ijab, and kabul. And then there is a seal. Or I say convert Dawri, because then they, I say convert because then they, there is no wadi involved. Any imam can be the wadi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the then, Hanafi school also. Oh, the Hanafi no wali. school. If you follow the Hanafi school, okay, there's two witnesses. Okay, that means secret marriages for you it's permissible, but La, I would it will end up with failure. أقل ما يقال فيه الكراهة. أقل ما يقال فيه الكراهة. But it's permissible in the end of the day. I cannot make haram what Allah has made halal. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. But I, I don't like secret marriages, advise, but we, we just explain to people. I would strongly advise any person. Yeah, Sheikh, I'm not talking about advices. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just muhaddad. Oh, it is Sheikh, permissible or to, not permissible? I have to. I don't like this. It's permissible or not because th there's there's certain adab that come. It's not okay. just it's not just halal and haram. One Sheikh asked me to ask you, and this is for the Sheikh, not from me, that he said, ask Dr. Yasser, uh, Yasser Qadi, uh, Professor Yasser Qadi, about his view about polygamy in America. What do you think? I believe it's only a matter of time before this will become legal. 
when they have allowed homosexuality, they have allowed same sex, they have allowed transgender, it's only a matter of time where this will also become legal. And I'm waiting and I will look forward to that time. Why not? If this is something that all Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, all allowed it from the beginning of time, Islam allowed it. In this but country, Islam allowed it also, it comes in the way, just one ayah in the Quran talks about it. And yeah, it talks generally about yatama, about orphan. What do you Sheikh, think about this year? Sheikh, we have a problem in America in many Muslim countries of extra qualified sisters that are single and few brothers that are single and qualified. Well, the same concept, we have an overpopulation of women. But it's the same concept of slavery. Slavery also, they, they were, it was permissible before because of the circumstances. A lot of people, they cannot feed themselves and water themselves. Then the Sayyid, the masters come to feed them. And also slavery, Allah did not end it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was encouraging people to end it. It was like we tightness. We cannot make haram the same what thing Allah has made halal. If Allah has made ta'addud halal, okay. I cannot make it haram. But wait a minute, this is not my view, just I'm conveying you something. The ayah, the only ayah talks about polygamy, it comes with the condition of orphan. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْصِتُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابُ مَنِ الَّذِي فَعَلَهَا فِي الْعُمُومِ مَنِ الَّذِي جَعَلَهَا فِي الْعُمُومِ جيد. So the issue of yatama being involved in ta'addud, as you're aware, نعم. that in those times and places, نعم. if a second cousin's daughter is being raised by you, Okay. And you know, you feel that, okay, I'm going to no, no, be- Sheikh, 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 wait a minute. The, the orphan that time and the that woman is the in orphan. general. That is yes, the orphan. Sheikh, orphan and woman the that orphan time. The that orphan that you are responsible for, you're raising okay, yeah, in your but, household. But let me explain Extended this point family. So, yeah. You know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. let me explain this first. Hmm. Women in general before, they did not have any kind of jobs. Hmm. And literally, if they are not get married or hmm. if, there is, if they did not have uh, parents, they're going to die from hunger. Because of that, people were getting married even from 100. Then the Quran comes to reduce it. And the Quran specifically talk about yatama because yatama that time has two problems. The orphan that times has two problems. The problem is that they don't have husbands and they don't have parents. For literally and they so, are dying. And so their status in marriage will go down in that society. Nah. Because in that society, your nasab was the most important thing. So orphans automatically, they are not prized possessions for marriage. But now everything changes. Now it changes. So what? So I don't understand. What are you trying to say specifically? I'm trying to say, you want to say like we should based not have on some, some liberal <laughs> like, views that yeah. ta'adud is, it, it's like slavery. Slavery, Allah reduce it. Allah did not end it up. So, and, but Allah reduce it that time because it's impossible that time to end it. And Allah reduce the thing. Kafara yameen, مش عارف ايه كذا. And also polygamy, it comes one time in the Quran under the condition of Yatama. I find this discussion more hypothetical and theoretical than realistic because look at the reality of the Muslim situation now. Who does ta'addud? Even in the Middle East, even in Arab cultures, Muslim few cultures. Few people, they do it. Few people. Aqal, wa mahum. And in the West, it's wujudu ka'adami almost, you know? It's no. like, yani, no. it's the, well, this is a theoretical issue, hypothetical. No. No. But I'm also pushing back a little bit, Sheikh, and I'm no. saying qualified men and qualified women. Yani, aqil men and aqil women, right? Good men and good women. If you were to put them all together, realistically, the number of women that are good and qualified are much more than the number of men. What is the solution for this problem now? Every society and community in America, including ours here in Dallas, every city I go to, there are women who are, mashallah, intelligent, hardworking, whatnot, and they cannot find husbands. And, there are not that case in men. <laughs> if a man wants to get married, he just but has to announce. But do you think that if they so make to, what, polygamy, so will, Sheikh, they will be okay? No, they will no. Dis, uh, di, yeah, so, I mean, destroy so, the lives so, of Sheikh, other women, those who already so married. I say something very bluntly. This is, again, as usual, get me into trouble, but it is the truth, Annie, when truth is sometimes bitter. This issue of polygamy, us men need to stop talking about it. Stop talking about it? No point in us. The women, so have, to decide, <laughs> the women have to decide amongst themselves what they want to do. It's very simple. It's a woman issue. It's a woman's issue. That's they need view. to decide amongst themselves. Mm. Would they rather have, because we have a problem in our, in our communities, that we have a surplus of qualified sisters who are not getting married. And this country has now allowed all types of marriages. 
It's only a matter of time before it's going to allow polygamy. It's only a matter of time. Already the Mormon church is attempting. You know, the Mormons wanted polygamy from the beginning. Utah, Utah, yeah, they wanted it, yeah. So it's only a matter of time. And when that happens, right now, okay, at least we can say it's against the law. But you don't prefer this, you just leave it for women. Women should decide. Our sisters have to decide amongst themselves what is is better for the overall maslaha of the community. Mm. Will they allow qualified? Because what it is, as you pointed out, one of our problems is that men don't know how to practice polygamy properly, properly. And one of our problems is that our sisters don't want our men to practice polygamy. Those that are happily married don't want their husbands to marry another servant, even if they're qualified financially, even if they have it. Let's be honest here, right? No. They don't want them and they think this is a type of dhulm that is taking place. But the natija or the reality, we have a societal problem of spinsterhood. Yani, women that are not getting married. But you say now it's woman issue. That means you mean that before the man uh, make polygamy or makes polygamy, he should take like permission from his own wife because his own wife is woman. So the way that modern society works, a marriage is not going to flourish. Our current marriages in the West, I'm not saying it's wajib, but I'm saying you cannot expect a marriage to flourish when a man is acting in a manner that is so, uh, uh, yani, uh, not taking into account the feelings of a, of a wife and his life partner and the mother of his children, is, that marriage is gonna khalas end in disaster. So there must be a cooperation. There must be a full, and that's why I'm saying it goes back to the women as well. So number one, men themselves, frankly, don't act like real men in being fair and in doing what Allah and his messenger want them to do. And in being very clear that, look, we wanna take yani, a woman who doesn't have a, a husband, she might have children, a, a widow, a, I wanna help society. You wanna be, be, do something for the sake of the sharia. Or yatama, again, yatima, she was at a disadvantage. And that's why Allah is allowing the yatima to have ta'addud. Because a yatima, her value goes down when she's not coming from a high sharaf, high nasab. She typically would not have wealth, you know, coming from an unknown family or whatever it might be. So Allah is encouraging those ladies who typically will not get, you know, the but best again, men. Again, the not. command comes with the yatama, not with everyone. Yeah, so, so let and women and men that decide. Time were different Le- Sheikh, time if a man and woman want to make ta'addud, who are you to stop them? I, I have no exactly. idea. I have no, 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 exactly. nothing to do and to so, say. But just, so that's my point. You know. If a lady, and I have met such ladies that they, uh, 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 I, I have met a number of people in this situation that uh, the, the, the lady said, I want to, uh, ta'addud, I want to find a husband that's part-time because I have a business. I, have a, I don't want a full-time husband. There are people like this, right? She's 35 years old, 40 years old, 45 years old. She doesn't want full-time husband. Yeah. She wants part-time husband, you know what I'm saying? And there might be a husband and wife, like they don't have children. This lady can help them, whatever it might be. Who are you to stop them, Sheikh? Right? You, you're not, to, so let people decide amongst themselves. What yeah. I'm saying. It's woman issue. Primarily, but also it's a men issue because men don't act like men. They don't act like gentlemen. They don't act like the Prophet Sallallahu they are not able to handle ta'addud. Men break under the pressure of ta'addud. No. Men Fanta, you break think under that the people should not talk about this issue nowadays? There's little fa'idah. No. And women should understand. No. Those women that are happily married, no. look around them and ask themselves, if I was on the other side and I was no. with that sister who's not married, no. would I want her to have some share of this or not? No. So both men and women, need to have conversations with their own genders, mm. not against each other. No, but they're gonna be against each other, yeah, they're gonna fight. Let us go with the question number seven with uh, Sheikh uh, Yasser, being that we have this problem, Sheikh, of marriages and divorces, things and, what do you think about uh, masturbation? And many people, they ask, the divorcee woman asking, uh, divorcee men, they are asking as well. And what about also uh, masturbation for young men and young women? Yani both. So, Al-istimna, yani no. self-stimulation. I've given a whole lecture here at Epic. You'll find it on the website as well about okay. self-stimulation. Khulasat al is that we find uh, no evidence for tahrim. It is something that is considered not noble, but something that is not noble doesn't become haram. And mm. in the situation we are in where shahawat are everywhere. What do you think about the ayah who says, illa ala azwajihim aw malaka, so, lifurujihim hafiwun. Yeah, so to extrapolate this ayah to masturbation doesn't make sense because 
It is allowed. Explain the ayah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ Those who guard their private parts, yep. except uh, with their wives uh, no. or with oh. their right hand possessions. Okay. يعني مالك يمين. So means those who guard their private parts from actual zina, from engagement in intercourse. Mm. As for self stimulation, بإجماع العلماء, all the scholars agree. I'm sorry to be explicit, so I'm giving a disclaimer. If there's children watching, they should not be watching this or whatnot. But it is allowed for the man to. Uh, use the hand of his wife. No, no, I'm not talking about those who. Let are me finish. Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. It go is ahead. allowed for the man okay. to be stimulated by his wife. Mm. The wife can use her hand on the man. So if the wife can use her hand and the ayah doesn't apply to her, you get my point here. Yep. The ayah does not apply to her. You're explaining the ayah now. So the ayah the has nothing itself, to do. The concept is the itself, ayah has nothing if, to if do. Men and women do that. So maybe they will be away from marriages. In the future, yeah, because they are enjoying themselves, and that's it. This is that's what other group the, of people that, said. That, that's <laughs> they're disconnected from reality. <laughs> it's like no, they said that these is a people are using uh, for some you people. know some toys and some yeah. uh, these uh, stuffs, and they say in the future maybe these women or these even men, the divorcee yeah. ones, or so the, they will the be away from that marriages. I they is, won't need marriages. The position this is what they that say, not me, by the way. That is Imam al-Shawkani's position. He has an entire risala fi hukm al-istimna. Imam al-Shawkani no. was very, very strict. Imam al-Qayyim, okay. Mawlana, or Imam al-Zuhari. Imam al-Qayyim has this, and there's athar from Ibn Abbas and others in this regard. By the Ahmed, way, I agree with you, but Ahmed just Ibn I wanted Hanbal, to ask yeah. uh, other Ahmed people. Ahmad ibn Hanbal also has an explicit, explicit riwayah in this no. regard that it is jaiz. Yani, so for uh, you, al-istimna, masturbation, for women or men, it's permissible, even divorcee women and divorcee men or young but, men. Uh, it is permissible, but we have to be very careful what that, that we don't open the door for zin al-ayn. No, no, I'm not talking about general I'm No, no, but just, see, oh, okay. for most people, no. for most, especially men, masturbation is linked with pornography. No. We have to be very clear here. Pornography, talking about, uh, masturbation pornography okay. is harmful to the soul. No. It no. corrupts a person's mind. It is in al All of this is clear. No. As for mujarrad al yani only masturbation, no. no doubt it is something that is not noble. No. And it's not something anybody should be proud of. No. But if a person does it, it's not something that will cause them to be punished in Jahannam. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Question number eight. Eight, I will move on. Now, okay. mashallah, <laughs> that do people, can people keep dogs in their homes? Yes or no? And don't tell me Maliki wa Shafi'i, I need the opinion of Sheikh Yasir. Me personally, I do not encourage this. That's all I will say. I do not encourage it. Why, Sheikh? Tatrud al Malaika or kicking the angels no. and this thing, or what do you No, the, because the Lu'ab is najis. That's the no. only thing. Lu'ab is najis. But if a person has it for any haja, then they have to be careful no, no, not of haja. the Lu'ab. Just to you know, uh, have them enjoy with them, walking with them, keeping them in their houses as a just fun. But if the lu'ab is najis, it causes problems. Okay, what? Why the lu'ab does not make problems for ashab al kahf? The dog were in the cave with those who. No, but even the lu'ab for for the one who owns it for a haja, he has to be careful of it. Okay, but, but what's the problem is... of, of the lu'ab itself, of the saliva itself? What's the problem? So the problem, there's no problem. The hadith tells us that it is najis. Okay, then. Okay, so Impurity. because it's najis, we, we don't we don't we don't want to pray with najasa on our clothes. We don't no want to problem. we don't want to sit down with najasa when we when we did, when we are told in the Sharia that a certain substance is najis. We no. should try Naj our best najasa to avoid it. Ayniya, well, najasa. I believe it is najasa ainiya, and this is the qawl of Jumhur as you're aware. Uh, Actually, um, even the Malikis did they not say it is najasa? Don't don't come. Don't no, 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 no. The Maliki they have a, a very uh, strange view. Just I'm asking about one specific thing, Sheikh. If you cannot find a najasa. You cannot see it, you cannot smell it, you cannot touch it. There is no najasa ainiya. You will consider the place as a najasa place or Shaykh, a najas place? you know for a f uh, may, Not yani, for fact, I don't. No, no, you know, uh, may Allah, yeah. yani you, you yourself or anybody, yani he urinated on his garment. Yeah, will be and for whatever clear. reason, for whatever, la, not necessarily, Shaykh. Alone and taam and raiha, Shaykh. Alone depends on <laughs> the la, acidity. Ya alone, ya, ya taam, ya, ya taam and raiha will go away in a while. Suppose you're walking okay, in the there sun. There is no najasa. Then. Suppose you're walking for in the sun. For me, there is no okay. najasa. So if, this if you is, have, Shaykh, Shaykh, just listen to me one minute. If someone make urinate on the on the soil uh, under the sh shade of the tree, then after one month there is no smell, there is no color. But this is there the, is no yeah, there is nothing. Is the soil still absorbs Najasa? it. The soil absorbs it. As for your clothes and it's there, it and will you be know there. It's there. It will be there, and you know it's there. Yeah, it, it will be there. It will be appearance. You will see even the color or loan 
اور طعم اور رائحه ما ذيس از يا شيخ شروط so, الفقهاء سو نو 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 ام سوري لون او لعاب, طعم او رائحه لعاب الكلب does not require uh, an اثر لعاب الكلب you don't need to necessarily yes. see it that means for me it's not نجاسه so for, okay that's your opinion جيد you're yeah. asking me mine i'm saying لعاب الكلب is نجس and because But of this Do you believe it's prohibited the malaika angels to enter the place? No, I don't believe this. I think uh, the lu'ab al-kalb is najis. No, so there is hadith be... also says this. Why you accept that hadith and you take this one? No, this is uh, um, tawjih of Arabi is, is on the, in this regard. Yeah, but لا. this is hadith who says that al-kalb yamna' al-malaika. هذا حديث في ال في الإمام في النسائي أو أبو داود واحد من الاثنين. So I have a long, as usual, you're asking all this. I have a longer lecture I gave about uh, all of the positions of the fuqaha about keeping of the dog. And there's a number of tawji had given. But no. just you believe well. that uh, the lu'ab, the saliva I, is najasa, I'm, impurity? I'm forgetting who said, yeah, so that's ahead. why. But uh, no a problem. number of scholars said that this is khas for Jibreel and the Prophet when he came with the Quran. This is no. khas for him. Some people, some ulama of the past said this. No. طيب. Uh, question number nine. By the way, Sheikh, I think no. I'm disappointing you that I'm not as liberal as you are, looks like, yani, huh? <laughs> and my critics accuse me of being the most liberal. And here I am, yani, taking you back in this I'm regard. I'm not liberal, Sheikh. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Bismillah. Question number nine. Can men shave their beard and can women pluck their uh, eyebrow? So, Sheikh, these types of questions, again, uh, as for plucking their eyebrows, again, mashallah, I have all of these questions much longer, go over all the adillah. Uh, the whole issue of beards and whatnot, like I said about some previous questions, certain issues have become so emotional, you cannot have a ilmi discussion without people just you know, automatically jumping to, he is this or he is that or he is this. And when that's the case, then I don't find it beneficial to have a discussion. When a person is t- t- taken an issue that should be discussed in an academic setting to a level of emotionalism, it becomes sa'ab to have a, a, a back and forth. The issue of the beard is in the grand scale of things, yani very low on the list of priorities of the ummah, very low. Some groups have made this the number three or four no, on the list. The majority of al-fuqaha, they say so, to shave your beard, you are a sinful. So, and they make it a big deal, by so, the way. So my point is, حدث الناس بقدر عقولهم Speak to the people according to their level, right? Amen. When the majority of Muslims are not even praying, they don't have zuhd and in, they don't have taqwa, they don't have khawf Allah Azza wa Jal, they're not thinking of the akhirah. People come and they concentrate on something on the list that might be number 97, number 150, and they ignore the first 100, right? You create a fitna in the minds of the people and you turn them away from the deen. These types of issues, Shaykh al Karim, they should come when the heart is full of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now you want to be like him. Then you come to that part of the list. So I believe it is good for the Muslim to want to follow the Prophet in some sunnahs like this one. And it's good. Shaykh Fir'aun has okay. long beard and Abu Jahl has long beard. And so again, we get into this. I never it's said habit. it's, I never said it's number yeah. one, number two. I never said it's the sign of Iman. I never said this is the mahakka al-khilaf bin al-Muslim wal-kafir. No, they said if you shave I your beard, you'll be fasiq. And I, fasiq la tuqbal shahadatu. You cannot even uh, let your daughter get married. So you the cannot one, witness her marriage in, because in you are fasiq. The one who wants I'm, to show I'm love you what to they the say, Prophet. Shaykh. That's their position. The no. one who loves the Prophet and believes that certain things, not everything, because in my opinion, dressing like the Prophet is not sunnah. I don't believe this. Dressing like him is not sunnah. It's uh, habit, but, ada? Ada. No. But I do believe that the beard is the sunnah that he wanted us to follow. I do believe this. But it should come from mahabba. It should mm-hmm. come when you want to be like him. It should also come from wanting to be like the Salihin. This is something that comes with them as well. Yeah. As for Fir'aun having a beard and Abu Lahab Abu Jahl having a beard, everybody had a beard back in the past. All this only happened in the 1910s when men began to shave. Wa illa every culture pre modernity would have beards. No. It was sha'air of the of the rujula, What's the plug in right? of the the eyebrows of the woman shaved? So, what do you think? Uh, a number of scholars of the past said this was a sign of prostitution. Yeah. And so it was prohibited as an Because alama that. for that. No. So uh, when uh, it is um, done, when it, yes. No. So when it is done for this, then it becomes uh, a prohibition with reason. Yeah. Now there is no reason for Because that. Because it okay. doesn't seem to make sense that there's Allah's la'na on Ma something beard, like this. Same the concept okay. of there the beard. No, there, no there is no Allah's la'na. There is no there Allah's la'na. No Allah's there is no like Now this. the polytheists like Jivar and uh, yeah. they, they have long beard. Yeah. So again, Shaykhana, as I said, this issue, once a person reaches a level of mahabba, 
No. He should automatically do it. No. I never want to give a whole khutbah about something that comes on the list very low. No, no. I don't believe this. So I leave this issue no. and it should be done organically and naturally. Tab Sheikh, uh, does hijab uh, is obligatory act and where is that Allah said hijab is obligatory act and I'm talking here about hijab to cover the hair of the woman. So the default, and again, Sheikh, the problem comes both the beard and the hijab. They are emphasized more than what Allah and his messenger have emphasized them in my humble opinion. Ma'an al-hijab is higher order than the comes beard. Comes with modesty. Okay. More than to comes with a certain place that so you have to cover. Again, let me rephrase what yeah, I'm saying ahead. so it is clear. Regardless of the position one holds about the hijab and the beard, to make these issues, the constant issues that are brought up in khutab and durus is not following the Quranic methodology. In the whole Quran, there's one or two verses about Nurul the hijab. Yeah. yeah. So it needs to be discussed in that priority and context. And the fact that we live in a time and a place where the level of fuhsh and nudity is so much, we need to understand our sisters cannot reach ideal immediately. So for them to be encouraged to go step by step, it is better than to present to them the ideal and know they cannot follow it. Mm -hmm. But they should know the ideal. No. But we should be gentle if they cannot reach the ideal. Let me finish, this is a very sensitive issue. The ideal and the default is that a woman must wear a loose covering for her entire body except the head and the face. This is the ideal. The, and the, the, the face the and face, the head and the, the hand. The hands and the Not face. Not the head, you said the head. Oh, sorry, the okay. hands and the face. Yeah, go ahead. So this is the ideal and the default. And this is, يعني يكاد يكون إجماع صراحة بين المذاهب يعني uh, كلها. All of the madahib would say that a woman must cover her hair and must cover her entire body with Even loose garments. Even her neck, her thagr? Her neck? Some of uh, Ahnaf, uh, they, they don't no, believe that. No, the Ahnaf said here. No, 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 the, the, something from a thagr. الجزء من الرقبة العليا. They, they shown it. Many, many women, uh, they shown I will it. have to look what you're saying. Okay, Shaykh. So this is the so ideal idea. This is the ideal. It is okay. the default. And it is, frankly, we can derive it directly from the Quran. We can derive it from the Quran. Now the issue comes. But the Quran does not mention anything about so hair, Shaykh. Again, Shaykh, again, Shaykh, you, you want to, mashallah, push the, the barrier and I'm pushing you back. So again, okay, the, the audience should That's realize. Mine. The audience should I'm realize. Just, huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just conveying the views. I'm Shaykh, bringing it from everywhere. Why am I called the liberal? I don't understand. Okay, let me, I'm let, called the reformist. Let, just, let me tell you something. Now I'm, I'm going to bring <laughs> other, other views. Shaykh, I, I know what others say just and I respect your views. Give me a second. Give me a second. Your views will hold them. In my opinion, we should encourage modesty all the time. And when our sisters are capable and ready, we tell them and encourage the wearing of the head. Other group no of doubt. people will come to tell you, not no, it's not ideal because there is hadith says, if you show in one hair, you will be hanging on a sirat at the day of judgment and falling in the hellfire. So it's not ideal idea. Now I'm not open minded, so I'm not I, liberal. I now. understand <laughs> some people consider showing the hair to be almost like zina or kabira min al kabair. This is what I'm right? talking about, how yeah. to answer this. So uh, I, I don't agree with this, but I, I do agree that it is obligatory for a woman no. to cover the hair. So you understand what I'm saying? My position is in the middle between one group that is saying- It's ideal sheikh or obligatory? No, uh, it is obligatory. The default but you said when we talk with our sisters- We, 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 we realize what percentage of them are doing this. Hmm. So we, Tell them, let me give you an example. Let me give you a simple example. If we tell them in every khutbah, wear the hijab, wear the hijab, and nobody's listening, then I need to give something to them that they can actually do. So why don't I say to them, and I've given khutbahs like this, that sisters be modest. And if you cannot wear the hijab, and it is, you should wear the hijab. If you cannot wear the hijab, then at least wear loose clothing. Can we start with that? No, one, no sister can say, oh, I cannot wear loose clothing. You can wear loose clothing. So then we start with her loose clothing. Okay, and once she's wearing loose clothing, then we can take her to the next level. Now, if she asks us, is hijab obligatory? I have no uh, way out and I must respond. But to constantly make the hijab the only issue, the primary issue, the fundamental issue, ya akhi, salah is a million times more important than Sheikh, the hijab. What do you mean of obligatory? That means yani, salah is obligatory. If you don't pray, you So this you leads make... us to another issue. One of my pet peeves, one of my criticisms of the Islamic discourse of the khitab, amongst the awam, 
we use words that the awam, yeah, Sheikh, this is technical language, wajib and makru and haram, this technical language. It's meant for the legal fuqaha. For the awam, if you say to them, for example, murder is haram, and then music is haram. Do you understand you are causing a fitna in their minds? This is what I'm talking about. You're using the same word for yani akbarul kabair, no. and something that even those that said music is haram, even the fuqaha that said it, it is yani min asghar al sagair of the of the of the you know. Uh, uh, the so being you uncover your hair as a woman, so, you make so, a major sin or minor sin. Sheikh, I asked this question from a number of ulama, but I don't know if I'm allowed to mention their names or not. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Just <laughs> this is the problem, Sheikh. Yani, these are very hassas questions. And but major our, sin? Our, 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 major sin like zina? But as Zania, she uncovered no, her I, hair I, I and, did, and Sheikh, her I clothes. Didn't, I didn't You're say equalize? anything, Sheikh. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't say anything. No, no, I'm You're not, jumping. not about you. You're jumping. I'm sick. I'm about those who say major sin. They are equalizing or equalizing or whatever between the one who makes zina which is she uncover all her body with the one who uncover so, five hairs? Sheikh, there are sins that ma, ma, ma ta'amad bihi al-balwa, right? That which has become muntashir or, or prevalent in a society, <laughs> right? And, hold on, let me finish. And if a person falls into a sin that is prevalent in an entire station or place or time, it is not the same as a person who goes against and makes his uh, a statement and does a sin that nobody does in his time and place. So there is a reality, even in our classical books of fiqh, even in usul al-fiqh, and well, a sin that is muntashir, that is, that is everybody is doing it, its level of sin is not gonna be the same as somebody who invents and brings about and makes a statement in a society that does not do it. No. So بِصِفَ عَامَّ We need to look at the context oh. and the culture But what the ulama told you? The ones that I asked? No They said it's not It's not major sin Yeah uh, I do agree with them 100% But I asked them in private and these are senior Like I mean I, I, I yeah, again sure. I have to well, I can't I'm a person no, 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 no I'm not asking yeah. about their names But these are but, people that are very mainstream and very no, conservative Again no. and and it is Allah's test upon me that the positions I hold, many nah. times people far greater than me hold them, but they get away with it. Nah. And when I say them, yani, subhanAllah, qamat dunya ma upon nah. me. Nah. So I, but the problem comes, Shaykhan, is that we have to be wise in these things. We don't just tell people, oh, this is a minor sin, go ahead and do it. Yeah, it's not a, it's like this. If, if so al we encourage, we encourage modesty. This is what we do. Yeah, this is the point. We but encourage if modesty. Shaykhna, yani, why as a shuyukh, as a ulama, uh, we knew something that it's easy, but we do not say to people, what is the point if al-haq, we should we show al-haq for everyone. We don't want to discourage piety, ya Sheikh. Let's be fair here as well. We don't want to discourage something that they might be doing. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't. La, ya Sheikh, we have to encourage. The to to make something uh, halal or minor no, sin, to I, make it major, major no, sin. To, say, to I never said major encourage sin, people with taqwa, I, I, which taqwa I haven't used major, not minor you, sin. Not you, Sheikh, not you. Yeah, Habib, yeah, no, I'm so, not but, talking about you. Okay, so that's upon I'm talking about me. those who do not tell people easy things in the deen, so, under the umbrella that we have to encourage people to be more uh, pious. You so, are hiding the haqq. No, it's not just hiding, Sheikh. They turn, yani, to nafir al nas min al-deen. Yassir wa la tu'asir wa shi'u wa tu'asir wa tu'asir wa tu'asir wa tu'asir So the problem comes, and this is the constant tension between the idealists and between the no, pragmatists. The constant tension. No. The idealists, no. they are not happy with 90%. They want 100, ya imma yu akafir dhal mudil murtad. Right? No. And this is the problem mainstream ulama, preachers that are preaching to the masses, they're not preaching to the idealists, they're preaching to those that are far from the deen. No. Our job is to make them closer to the deen. No. Our job is to make them from zero to 10, from 10 to 20, from 20 to 30. No. In order to do that, we don't want to start with 100 because they're never gonna, they're gonna say 100, I'm at zero, how can I get there? No. You understand? No. We have to go to their level. At the same time, and this is the key point, we are not negating what ideal is. No. We're not making fun of the ideal. So clear, Shia. Right? No, no. So the default is that Islam has come with a dress code for men and women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us to be modest, 
And Allah anzalna libas and yuwari sawatikum wa zina. And warisha. No. Allah Azza wa Jal. Warisha, sorry. Uh, zina is khud wa zina. So Allah Azza wa Jal uh, sent us down clothes and throughout all civilizations and culture, Shaykhana. Think about this. Every Muslim civilization from Indonesia all the way, you know, to Morocco and, and then Andalus, our sisters wore head coverings. Think about this. No. There was never a society. Sheikh, don't from, tell me this to, I'm not against the hijab. No, no, just, I'm, so, I'm, I'm not, you, I'm using you as the example because there are people that are saying hijab. I have hijab, to be clear yeah, with people. Yeah, yeah I know, uh, yeah. So so the default is nah, the Sharia has understood. come with modesty and nah. hishma, and this includes the covering of the face, nah, of the head. Understood, and I, wallahi, my, uh, I'm so curious to know who's the ulama that Sheikh took about with them about this issue. Uh, I'm gonna know the names after the inshallah interview, but uh, Sheikh <laughs> Sheikh Yasser, tantalizing. <laughs> <laughs> one from the most knowledgeable ulama here in America and La, all yeah, over the world. And, yeah, Allah, we are enjoying <laughs> talking with Sheikh Yasser. Last question, so, question number ten, that about the long thobe or long uh, clothes. Uh, some people said that if you do it even without khuyala, without arrogance, you will be in hellfire. Even Ibn Taymiyyah said, "Whoever does this." Without any khuyala, uh, this is not a uh, uh, kabira. I mean, it's not a kabira. But Even Ibn Taymiyyah said But this. Sheikh Ahmed ibn Hanbal said something different. Ibn Taymiyyah said you must have the kibr. No, no, Ahmed ibn Hanbal said if you wear something below the kaab, below the, the ankles, you will be in hellfire. And now Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, يعني, this, uh, it's not following. He's not following now his sheikh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So, Tell me about Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So, so uh, as far as I am aware, what you are saying, Ibn Hanbal himself has another qawl. I'll have to look it up. But as you know, Ibn Hanbal always- When he explained the hadith, ya Shikhna, of ma asfal al-ka'bayn fa huwa fi nar huwa qala, I will have to look it up. La na'akhud al-hadith al-akhar. We won't take another hadith who talks about khuyala as a qarina. Shikh, the default position of all four madahib, al-hanabila, wal-shawafi' wal-hanafiyya wal-malikiyya, the default position is that the one who lowers the garments without khuyala, without kibr, the sin, the kabira does not apply to him. This is the default position. Al-Aqs, the one who say that it is a sin, this is qalilu ma hum ashirdi, a small group of people. Actually, believe it or not, do you know who was one of the most mutashaddid? Ibn Hajar in this regard, a shafi'i. No. Even though Imam al-Shafi'i didn't hold this position, but a shafi'i later on, Ibn Hajar and a dhahabi. No. And a dhahabi. Oh, no. These two were very strict in this regard. Then the, the modern yani, Salafi movement, they, they took this as the, the default position. Sheikh, they, they were Taymiyyah. hanging it in the masajid, making Taymiyyah. the picture you live yeah. in the 90s there. Yeah. If your thobe, like the thobe who covers the ankles, they said, fin nar, yeah. so you will be in hellfire. Ibn Taymiyyah didn't have this position and none of the former dhahibs has the fatwa on this. Yani, none of the former dhahibs. This is something I did, a, by the way, this was in my Medina days. My first major bahth I did in Medina, my first year that I was really, and istagrabt kif, how can the fuqaha, the majority of them have a position? And, you know- Hanbali, madhab only- No, yeah, Sheikh, Hanbali madhab. Not Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ahmed nafsu, Sheikh Nam Haram. Yeah, Sheikh, Ibn Qudama and others, la la, this is- Ibn Qudama, nothing comparison to Ibn Hanbal. But the Mu'tamad fil the madhab. Yeah, Sheikh, Ibn Hanbal himself, forget about Mu'tamad. Ibn Hanbal himself, he's so, you know- We are not able to look up right now because we're having it back and forth, but I'm 99% sure you will find the riwayah in which he also made this tafsir. What we have you to do, Sheikh, when riwayah. we found two riwayat and in opposite yeah, each You're other. getting into a whole solar fiqh issue. Lahni, <laughs> what we have to do with that? When you bring some alim says something and the opposite of it, which one you have to take? Which qawl you have to take? Depends on which usul you're gonna follow. And that's a whole different question. If you are athari, you're gonna just pick the, the things. Would you make it more more strict Sheikh, or what? Let's not open this door because everybody is a muqallid. <laughs> and so the athari will find his shaykh that he thinks is upon the haq and he will say, this is what the hadith says. So everybody everybody follows their own shaykh no. in this regard. Really so in my opinion, Sheikh Anna, this prohibition, this prohibition applies in this time in society. If he's in Nabi in the time of the Prophet the point of lowering your thobe underneath the, the, the ankle it was meant to show that I have wealth. No. I have so much clothes at home, I can get it dirty. You want to make the statement like the one who has يعني, a very loud suit, we call it. You know, the suit that has this and like يعني, very like showing off suit, flashy suit. 
right? No. Somebody who has a car with all the weird colors and the most $200,000 car, he wants to make the statement, I am rich and I'm flaunting it. Fa, the issue is the kibber of the heart. No. And the, 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 the garment Mafum becomes shit. the alama of that kibber, Mafum. right? So in our time and, and time, and everybody is wearing normal pants and shirts and, no. and thobes and whatnot, no. the, the sabab is gone and the illa is gone. So it is not sure. something that is haram. Every time, alhamdulillah, we stayed with Sheikh uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi. We are enjoying, uh, subhanAllah, three hours now to bring you these 10 questions. We are staying like three hours to uh, record with Sheikh Yasser in his masjid uh, in Ibik. I really enjoyed uh, with uh, talking with Sheikh uh, Yasser, Professor Yasser Qadi, about all these uh, uh, matters and questions. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make us in his mawazin uh, al-hasanat. I mean, I, mean, I want to make a disclaimer, Sheikh. These yeah. 10 questions were completely chosen by you, not nah. by me. Yeah, 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 of course. They were very <laughs> hassas questions. <laughs> nah. And I, each one deserves a long, some of them I have given longer responses. Nah. And so nah. in case wordings were not done correctly, I hope inshallah the critics can overlook this time because everything we have nah. to be careful about. But the, the point is clear, there's awlawiyyat, there's priorities. Nah. Most of these questions, especially these fiqh questions you ask, they're not from the awlawiyyat. Nah. And so my point is we have to be the wasat. We nah. don't want to make tanfir of here or nah. tanfir of there. That's nah. what we're trying to say, inshallah. Wallahi, we are blessed as a Muslims uh, people living here in America to have uh, someone like Sheikh nah. uh, Yasser Qadi nah, with Sheikh, his knowledge, nah. with We are his blessed ilm. to have Wallahi, Allah, Sheikh, all the with people his, of ilm. Uh, politeness, with his uh, wisdom, I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him more. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him Jami and his Jami family. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him goodness in the dunya wal akhira. Thank you so much. Uh, those who are watching us from any place uh, in the world, barakallahu feekum. This is Imam Bakir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.